Unlike other brands, Ray doesn't stop you from opening up the case with silly warranty stickers, but that doesn't mean that the warranty can't be voided if you're damaging the interior of the device. So if you're gentle enough, it's easy to blow out any accumulated dust or do any necessary repairs. That being said, to check out the internal components of the Ray RGE5, you need to remove the four screws from the bottom of the case. They are hidden underneath the two silicon bands. After doing so, gently pry open the top of the router. Now we should be able to see the PCB with the large heatsink and the 8 antennas. I saw that 4 antennas are attached using connectors, while the other 4 are soldered to the board. The large heatsink can easily be detached after removing the 4 screws and then the main chips are covered by aluminum protections. Of course they need to be removed, but do be careful because they are surprisingly fragile and I managed to damage a couple of them. Nothing that will impact the performance of the router, but most likely will void the warranty. Now let's see the chipsets. Make sure to pause at any time if you want to have a better look at each component. I noticed that the flash memory chip is missing and of course it's on the other side of the PCB. So I detached the four antenna connectors and turned the board upside down. This way I was able to identify the 16 megabytes of flash memory from XMIC, which is really not that much. I do need to mention that the solder antennas are used for the 2.4 GHz frequency band, but the way the cables are routed within the case is not very optimal. I say that because one of the cables was way too close to one screw which damaged it a bit and may affect the Wi-Fi performance. I did put it in another position, but do be aware that this can happen to you as well. That's about it for this teardown video. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to test this specific router. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.